Hi folks, my name is Jeff Talkington and I'm an SE with Palo Alto Networks. Today I'd like to talk to you about agentless user ID configuration. Now, what do I mean when I say agentless user ID configuration? Well, with Palo Alto Networks, we have the capability of doing policy and logging around user ID. So what that means is that when a PC, when a computer, when a user goes through my firewall, I can see which user that is based on any number of factors from where we can pull information sources, including Active Directory, Exchange, eDirectory, uh, syslog sources. Um, we can even pull from third-party sources like uh, Aruba, ClearPass. Uh, basically, anything that can send us syslog information, we can pull a user ID from. So with that user ID information, I can create policy and we can get visibility into what's going on in our network. Now, if we go back a few years, Palo Alto Networks had an agent-based user ID configuration. That is to say that we would have to install an agent on an Active Directory server and have that running there in order to get user ID information. As you can imagine, that bothered some AD administrators. They didn't like having to put this agent on all of their Active Directory servers. Additionally, the service account that we would use would need a large amount of permissions, usually a domain administrator privilege. So again, Active Directory administrators didn't really like that idea. So fast forward a couple of years, Palo Alto Networks creates an agentless user ID configuration. So what I can do now is from my firewall, I can reach out to an Active Directory server, pull user information, and use that for both logging and policy creation. So let me show you what I'm doing right now, how my system is set up, and I'll walk you through each of those steps that's required to make this work. Now, I've got a lab set up here, and there are three pieces to this. One of them is my Active Directory server, and you can see I'm using Windows Server 2012. The next is gonna be my uh, firewall, my next generation firewall from Palo Alto Networks. And in this case, it's gonna be a virtualized firewall. Uh, the configuration is the same for both our virtualized and our physical appliances. And then I'm going to have a client machine where I'm logged in as a domain user. And this PC is connected to my Active Directory server. Okay, so a relatively simple setup, but it should help us illustrate this point of how to configure userless or excuse me, agentless user ID. So let's get into it. The first step in doing agentless user ID is I have to create a service account. In this case, what I'm doing is creating an account called Pan Agent. Now this service account, um, it only needs to have access to certain things. You're going to set up this service account like you would any other service account. So there's a couple of um, precautions that you're going to want to take um, set this up exactly like you would any other service account. Um, do things like disable interactive logins uh, and take a couple other precautions. I'm not going to jump into those right now, uh, but just be aware this, this is a service account and you need to treat it as such. As far as basic access and the things that you have to do to make this work out of the box is we have to have a, a separate account that we can use and then we have to create memberships. Now there's three things that we need to be members of, and that's distributed com, event log readers, and server operators. Now domain users, as soon as you create the account, you'll be a member of domain users by default. So, but these are the three that we really care about. Distributed com, event loggers, event log readers, excuse me, and server operators. Okay, so once you have those, we're good to go there. Step two, we're gonna jump into the WMI management console get into the properties here. Let's get into the properties. We'll go to security, open this up, and we need to get into CM, CIM v2 and go into the security tab on here. We'll add our pan agent. This is our service account that we, have, we just created. We'll add pan agent into here. And the two things that we need to check to make this work are enable account and remote enable. 
and we'll set those to allow for both. So those are the two big things we need to do from a, an Active Directory side. Pretty much everything else from now on is going to be done in our next generation firewall. So let's go ahead and get in the next gen firewall. From here, what we need to do is we'll go to the device tab right here and then go to user identification. So under user identification, we'll go to user mapping and this is where we do our user ID setup. We'll click on the edit button in the upper right and this is where we do our WMI authentication. So the WMI management piece that we just did for Active Directory, this is how we're tying into that. With WMI authentication, what we need to do is put our username in. So we're gonna do our domain name, which in this case is Acme, and our service account, and then our passwords. All right. The next thing we're going to do after we do that is we'll go into our server monitoring and this is where we specify where that AD server is. So we'll specify the AD server. In this case, I just gave it a simple name and a simple description. And we also specify the type. So this is what I was talking about as far as being able to connect to different types of servers and pull user ID information from a number of different sources. So the process is still the same even if we're doing Active Directory, Exchange, eDirectory, or anything that can send us syslog information. It's the same process here. So we'll set up our AD server. We'll specify Active Directory, the network address. And once we do a commit, that's when we'll see that the connection status will change. Before doing the commit, you won't see this as connected. It's only after you do a commit of that configuration. One more thing I want to point out here is that while we're setting this up, we also want to specify what networks to include and more importantly exclude from agentless user ID. So what we're saying is that these networks here, this 192.168.55.45 and 35.0, those are all networks that I'm going to pull user ID information from. Then I'll do this default exclude rule that says any network uh, that I haven't specifically included, don't collect user ID information from. More importantly, what we can do with user ID is what's called a WMI probe. We can actively reach out and try to pull user information. So if we're doing that on the inside of the network, that's fine. But this isn't something where you want to be sending WMI probes out to the world particularly outside your network. So you need to be very careful about which networks you include and exclude as part of your user ID setup. You don't want to just do every network everywhere. Okay. So once we do that, we're pretty much good to go as far as the user ID piece is concerned. The next thing we need to do after we do this, if you want, you can you should already be getting, uh, once you do the commit, you should be able to start seeing user information flowing across. And you can confirm that. I'll just open up a terminal. Uh, you can do this through CLI. Uh, the GUI will tell you that you're connected to the server itself to make sure that you're actually pulling user information the best way is through the CLI. And it's this command show user IP user mapping all. And this will show you what user IDs that you've picked up. So you'll see that we've got the service account and then we've got my user account on here as well. Okay, so we know we're picking up user IDs. Finally, what we need to do is we need to specify which zones within the firewall that we're gonna be collecting or we're doing user ID with because we don't necessarily wanna do it on every zone. For example here, I've got my untrust zone which is my outside of the you know the public side of my network the outside of my network i don't want to do user id on that but on my trust zone and my inside user zone i absolutely want to do user id i want to pull that information and be able to use that for both logging and for policy so if i click on here let's look at our inside user it's simply a checkbox here in the lower left and once you turn that on again you'll just have to do a commit to get that to stick all right so 
at this point, we have all, we've done everything we need to do to start pulling user information and even create policy for individual users. So if I look here at my monitor tab, this is my logging tab, I can see that I'm starting to pull user ID information. And we can see that from um, my PC, the one that I've created this 192.168.35.131, going to my AD server, and I've got user ID information associated with that. Now, if I want to take this a step further and create policy around that, I can do that. But here's the caveat. In order to create policy, we don't want to do that around individual users. Instead, what we'd like to do is pull a group uh, into a, from AD, for example, and use that group membership to define our policy. So we can do exactly that. We can pull in groups from Active Directory and use them as part of our policy. That takes one more step of configuration, though. So let's go back to device. We're going to go to user identification again. And this time we're going to go to our group mapping settings. Now, to do group mappings, what we have to do is do a configuration here where we reference our AD server. Um, in order to do that, though, I need to create a server profile. To create a server profile, it's here in the device tab as well. And we'll go down here to our server profiles listing. Now you can see that we can create profiles around any number of servers for any number of protocols. In order to tie into AD and look at those group mappings, we'll typically use LDAP. So if we look at LDAP, what I've done is created uh, a server profile for this Acme AD server. I'm referencing the IP address and the standard port number of 389. And you can see here that I'm binding this agent, this PAN agent, uh, at acme.com. That's the user ID. This is that service account that I just created, right? So once we have that, that server profile, what I can do is go back into um, my user ID at the group mappings, create this group mapping for reference the Acme LDAP server in that server profile, what the user domain is, and we can actually get down to searching uh, individual filters and make this a little more granular if we want to. In this case, I'm leaving it pretty much wide open. Um, we can also do group include lists and, and custom groups, okay? But I'm gonna leave this as basically the default now so we can pull in all the groups. From here, what I can do is I can jump into my policies and create policies around individual users or groups if I want to. Now I've created a, a sample here just to illustrate um, user groups and being able to create a policy around a specific user. So I've got this user policy here. And if we jump into it, what I can see is that I'm going, uh, I've created this general user policy. Source is, the source zone is gonna be this inside user zone that I've created. The user is going to be me. Uh, this domain account that I've done. Destination is going to be untrust. Application, right now is set to any, but we can get very granular in that. Um, that's the power of the next generation firewall is that we can specify um, by application what we want to do, not just port or protocol. So we can get very specific there. I can also do service or URL category, and then my individual actions where we can get very granular and do profiles where we do antivirus, vulnerability protection, spyware, URL filtering, file blocking, all of that, okay? But the big piece here is that I can create this policy based around my user. Now you've seen I've done for an individual user, but since we've enabled the group mappings, what that lets me do is if I do the add here, you'll see that this is populated with all of my groups from the Acme domain automatically. And this is in my dropdown, and I'm able to select from any of those. These are not ones that I've created. These are imported from the Active Directory server. So what that lets me do is, by group, give access via policy. It's a very powerful tool, 
and it makes it very easy to do security around my network. So I can do, for example, let's say uh, domain admins we're going to add into that group. Simply add it, click OK, and then I'll do a commit at the end of this. So very quickly, what we've been able to do is pull in user ID information from Active Directory. We've been able to get logging based off of that. And most importantly, I've been able to create policy around that with my security policies and pulling in the group mappings from Active Directory. So this is a very powerful tool as far as securing your network based on user IDs and user groups within Active Directory. I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a great day.